This is Shruti Bharagaj, and I'm presenting on the topic Transcriptions and Majors of Treatment Sensitive Breast Cancer Cell Lines, Cultured with Bone Marrow Microenvironment. Firstly, let's understand the disease. What is breast cancer? Breast cancer growth is an infection that makes the cells of the breast become unreasonably large. Breast cancer growth is characterized in the various classifications. It most regularly starts in the pipelines or lobules. This disease can possibly spread to different locations of the body by means of the blood and lymph vessels. Breast disease side effects fluctuate from one individual to another. Certain individuals have no apparent signs or side effects. Coming up next are some breast disease symptoms or signs. An unfit knot or lump in the breast or underarm, expanding or thickening of a breast part, dimpling or bothering of the breast skin, flaky skin or redness in the areola area, areola or nipple pulling in or irritation in the areola area, etc. All the signs does not actually point towards breast cancer. It can be due to other reasons also. Now, how is breast cancer treated? Breast cancer can be treated in different ways. Some of them are surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, etc. Being a lady and being more established are two significant factors that in your risk of breast cancer. Most of the breast cancer growths are analyzed in ladies beyond 50 years old. Other variables are smoking, exposure to cancer causing chemicals, and changes in other hormones related to night shift employment may also raise your risk. Inherited breast cancers are rare, accounting for about 5 to 10% of all malignancies. Inherited breast cancer arises when gene mutations or abnormalities are passed down from the parent to the child within a family. Now coming to our topic, what is the gene signature? A gene signature, or which is also known as a gene expression signature, is a single or combined collection of genes in a cell that exhibits a distinct pattern of gene expression as a result of a changed or unmodified biological processes or a pathogenic medical condition. Disease transcription signatures have the potential to be used for two different purposes, diagnosing a patient's disease status and prognosis, thus guiding treatment decisions and gaining insights into disease mechanisms. The purpose of the following project or the research work is to find the genes that are mainly responsible for causing breast cancer and also to find the gene expression, function, and the plasma analysis of those differentially expressed genes found. For this particular work, I used various data sets, various methods and techniques, and also the T-BioInfo server. The three techniques that we use for this project are the RNA sequence analysis, normalization PCA technique, and differential gene analysis, and thus their respective pipelines to get the output results. This slide shows us the data sets used and the samples. Let's move on to the methodology used. The data set was taken from the NCBI site. It was based on the P62 isoform with alternative splicing enhances chemo resistance in breast cancer. The organism was homo sapien. A total of 20 samples were present in the data set. Data from 10 pre and post NAC breast cancer sample pairs were used to create the overall design. The type of samples present was SRA and the source from which it was taken was the breast cancer tissue. I downloaded the required files of the sample data from the particular data set for my project. Let's know about what's pipeline. A pipeline is a workflow with interconnected processes that each take the output of the preceding step. Fixing mistakes and reads, cleaning out undesirable technical variations, mapping on genome on transcriptome, and organizing raw reads into genes and isoforms are all part of this workflow, which uses specific file formats to structure data in a step-by-step -step way. Here, we use a total of three pipelines. This slide shows a screenshot of the first pipeline that was ran. The name of the first pipeline is the RNA sequence pipeline. A sample of RNA is converted to a cDNA library, which is subsequently sequenced and mapped against the reference genome in RNA sequence. It also gives information on alternative splicing and non-coding RNA in addition to the capacity to assess gene expression levels such as microRNA. RNA sequence analysis can reveal biological information on changes in gene expression levels, gene structure, and splicing patterns. So for this reason, this pipeline is used. Now let's move on to the steps. 
and also understand each element of the pipeline. First step is start. The RNA sequence analysis pipeline begins with the task name start. It merges user selected data, input choices into a sequence of tags and creates the appropriate pipeline option. Pre-processing raw readings comes next once you start your pipeline. We are doing two pre-processing stages. First is the disconnect the adapters and second is PCR duplicates are removed. Now moving on to the second step that is primomatic. Adapters were added to readings during the RNA sequencing process. The trimomatic module in this pipeline removes such adapters. The trimomatic program removes technical adapters from raw sequencing reads. Trimomatic key processing is typically used to improve the quality of read alignment on the reference genome. The third step is the PCR clean. The PCR clean module cleans generally copy producers from crude sequencing information. Input designs for the module are FASTQ or FASTA sequencing for users. In the wake of cleaning PCR copies, the result is given in a similar organization as information that can be either FASTQ or FASTA. The fourth step is mapping or the alignment of clean reads on reference genome. After you clean and pre-process the raw sequencing reads, the readings will then be mapped to the reference genome. As a result, mapping software will be emphasized. To map the readings, we are using the Brownie T2 tool. The Brownie T2 is a modified version of the Brownie T2 algorithm that maps transcripts. It is a fast alignment algorithm based on the seed technique. Fifth step is the quantification of RNA expression. Once you've successfully mapped your readings to the reference genome, the measurement of RNA expression value is the next step. The RNA expression measurement approach, approach include selfish or RSA. We'll create an RNA expression table with FPKM values using the RSEM or same expression table technique. The RSEM software tool may be used to calculate genes and isoform abundances from single end or pair end RNA sequence data. The last step is to end the pipeline. When the expression quantification is finished, finally at the top right side of the interface, select the end option to conclude this pipeline. The pipeline will divide into server. Server, in my case, took roughly around four to five days to be complete. The next slide shows us a screenshot of the second pipeline that we ran. The name of the second pipeline is the Quantile Normalization Pipeline with PCR. We examine the influence of normalization on an inputted file data before calculating these same components. The data is noticeably more clear and simple to deal with after normalization, that is, it reduces the number. The number of factors or components derived through PCA is smaller than the initial number of variables, in this case, the genes. This is why we perform this. The steps and the elements are explained below. The first step is start. To begin, go to the top menu and choose area of analysis, then data mining utilities. Click upload files to upload the gene expression file generated in the previous step. Simply submit the gene expression file in this case. On the pop-up, click start, then OK. The second step is select quantile normalization. A window will emerge with the title parameters. Convert the table to LN and set the threshold to 5.0. Choose yes in the next option. Select save in the next. You can now choose to stop your analysis at, at quantile normalization, but we're going to keep on going with the PCA. The third step is to generate PCA components. Select PCA components to generate PCA component. You can also use the PCR library that can produce visualization plot in PDF file. I chose the default settings here. You can experiment with the parameters to see what happens. The last is to end. To choose the pop-up, click end and save, then name your pipeline. This slide shows us the screenshot of the third pipeline. The name of the third pipeline is the differential expression pipeline. It is essential to realize that we should utilize a particular arrangement of information while running this sort of investigation. That's why we do this particular step. To examine the relevant genes from the RNA expression data, a variety of methods or algorithms can be used. Steps and elements under this pipeline are the first, 
is start. To do differential expression analysis, go to the T-BioInfo server's data mining section and click the differential expression option. Then comes file upload. When you select differential expression, you will be sent to the file upload page. The second step is grouping of the samples. After information transfer, try to drag the examples that try to drag the samples into gatherings. It is essential to recall what was your group B and your group A. In my situation, the untreated samples are in group one and the treated samples are in group two. The third step is to perform differential gene expression analysis using DSEC2. Choose a DSEC2 module to undertake differential gene expression analysis. When you click DSEC2, a box will appear asking you to define or specify the parameters. The fourth step is to perform enrichment analysis of significant genes for biological annotation. We'll use enrichment analysis and GSEA, that is a gene set enrichment analysis, to figure out what the biological implications of the important genes are. We we'll figure out what relevant pathways are significant genes are enriched in based on the enrichment analysis. When you choose the enrichment analysis module, a pop-up window will appear, allowing you to set the parameters. The fifth step is to perform GSEA. When you click on the GSE analysis module, you will get a pop-up similar to the enrichment analysis module where you can set or define your parameters. The last step is to end name and run your pipeline. To end the pipeline, click on the end button, then name the pipeline lastly, click on the run on clusters to run the pipeline. Let's look at the results that we got after running all the three pipelines. The RNA sequence analysis pipeline results. This method generates a gene expression file that includes gene IDs, gene expression, and anticipated counts for each gene. Below is the visual to the file that we obtained. The next is a normalization PCA pipeline results. The yellow dots on the PCA graph, which you can see on the right side, indicates treated samples, whereas the gray points represent the untreated samples. The PCA plot does not show significant separation and it does not cover or explain a large number of variations. This is because according to the statistics, PCA1, which is 16.4% and PCA2, which is 12.48%, which combined do not even cover 30%. And similarly, PC1, PC2 and PC3 together do not even cover 40%. So we can say that because the PC plot does not cover even half of the data distribution, we cannot infer or make a conclusion based on it. As a result, we proceeded with the differential gene analysis to obtain the gene list. Now, the differential gene analysis results will get a lot of outputs after finishing the third pipeline. The first would be the visual representation of the differentially expressed genes using a volcano plot. The second, dsec all.txt file, which is a tabular representation of the differentially expressed gene. And last is the enrichment and GSEA plots. Now let's talk about first the dsec all.txt file. This provides us with important information for each gene, such as the p-adjusted value, which should be less than 0.05 to determine if a gene is substantially differentially expressed or not. To determine if a gene is considerably upregulated, the log to fold chain value should be greater than or equal to 1.5, and significantly, the downregulated log fold to change value should be greater than or equal to minus 1.5. After the differential gene analysis pipeline, we identified a total of 63 genes out of 24,000 gene data. The gene list of both upregulated and downregulated genes is shown below, along with the gene symbols and gene IDs and the in-symbol IDs, which we have outputted from the particular pipeline. Let's now look at the genes named as MA. Here we can say that this is a different gene expression pattern that's been expressed by the responders case as observed in the transcripts that are not characterized in the databases. So they are given by their in symbol IDs that we have outputted or identified or found in our resulted data. We can also determine which genes are expressed at different levels 
between conditions by differential gene testing. These identified genes can offer biological insight into the process affected by the conditions of interest. Now let's see what the volcano plot shows us. The differential gene analysis process generates a volcano plot. The plot shows us that the x-axis indicates log to fold change. The y-axis represents the p-adjusted value. The red dots on the plot represent significant genes. The blue dots represent the non-significant genes. The red dots with gene names represent the most significant genes. Upregulated genes in the samples are represented on the left side of the x-axis, whereas downregulated genes are represented on the right side of the x-axis. This slide contains the screenshot of the volcano plot along with the differentially expressed genes found. Highly significant genes are responsible for the activities and the reasons, of course, of the disease to which they are associated with, which in this project is breast cancer. We can see the genes that we obtained with the red dots. Now let's move on to the geo enrichment analysis results. First, let's talk about the dot plot. We can observe that the plot contains the geo terms on the y-axis that are correlated to the dots. The significant score or p-adjusted value for enrichment of genes in the geo terms is shown by the color of the dot. The color red donates more relevance, whereas the color blue donates less relevance. The number of the genes in the geo term is represented by the size of the dots. The larger the dot, the more genes are present. The smaller the dot, the less genes are found in a certain geo category. In the CSV file that we obtain, we can likewise see explicit qualities related with each term and accurate p adjusted values. These are the plots that were outputted. Some tumors have mutations that are typically observed in the cells. Certain mutations in cells can be used to confirm a cancer diagnosis. Gene identification also aids in the development of innovative cancer therapies and diagnosis researches. So we can conclude by saying that the various plots, graphs, and outputted data files obtained show us the various relationships and activities of the highly significant genes in breast cancer cell lines cultured with bone marrow microenvironment. And this information and data can be useful in predicting various things about the disease and thus helps us in their study. Thank you.